Thanks, Yusuf, for the very nice introduction. I guess it's always a very pleasure to hear about such a very uh, wonderful words from the head of the department. Yeah. So anyway, so thank you for coming for this lecture. And uh, today is my really great pleasure to be here to discuss uh, uh, my recent uh, results about the biometrics for photonics. So this is uh, which I haven't discussed, which I haven't presented before. So, so in the last decades, so there are many successful examples. I mean, in particular for the photonic devices, yeah, to learning, uh, learning from the nature, yeah. So, for example, the green uh, fluorescence uh, protein is one of the uh, successful examples. So nowadays, so people use them to isolate it from the squish fields, or so, yeah, so from the jellyfish, and use them for the bioimage and the sensing, yeah. And the success of this learning process has been uh, identifi identified by the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2008. Another example is uh, the fish, uh, fish eye lens. So uh, different from the human, human size, so the refract index of the, uh, of the fish, uh, fish eyes has the parabolic distribution. So this can give the very uh, better image and also with very high sensitivity. Yeah. So this is a very beneficial for fishes under the water, which is normally very dark. And we also have learned from the nature that uh, about this structural colony. Yeah. For example, example here. So we, if you look at this uh, uh, microstructure interface uh, in the wings of the butterflies, which can make uh, uh, mm, such beautiful colors. Yeah. So. So when I come to my learning experience here, so I started, uh, so my learning experience started uh, when I look at this once uh, with my daughter in the forest, uh, in the Finnish forest after I come here. So I was thinking, so any possibility to use the spider silk for photonics, because you can see it's pretty transparent, yeah. So indeed, if you look at the literature, so the people have already used the spider silk uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for guiding the light inside of the uh, silk. And the light propagation loss of this uh, spider silk is around 1 dB per millimeter, which is uh, pretty promising for the very short distance optical interconnection. And also the people have used uh, use this uh, spider silk for this uh, super resolution lens, yeah, for imaging. Yeah, this is also something very interesting. Yeah. But however, it's, I realize that it's very challenging to mass product the spider silk. Yeah. Because uh, other, uh, unless you can get the Spider-Man, Spider-Man students or postdoc in your group, yeah. So that means so we have to think about something else, yeah. So then silk uh, come to my mind, so because of silk has been used for more than 5,000 years, and uh, is fully biocompatible, yeah. And it has a very great uh, mechanical properties. For example, the tenth strength of silk is pretty comparable to the steel. So this is really amazing, yeah. And also, so uh, silk is very promising for the photonics, yeah, because it's a very high transparency. And for example, showing in this, in this figure, and the transparency can be up to 100, uh, up to 90% of the uh, transparency. And it's widely available. For example, in 2015, uh, the silk production it uh, was around. It was more than 200 kilotons in in 2015, and also it's a very uh, physically robust. Yeah, for example, it can be preserved in nature without a refuge for more than 1,000 years. Yeah, so the reason behind it is of you have a large, these the hydrophobic domains inside of the silk can protect this unstable uh, these uh, proteins inside of this uh, inside of the silk. Yeah. So that means if you can engineer the structure of the silk inside, uh, the protein structure inside of the silk, you can control, uh, you, you can control this, uh, you can control the stability, yeah, for the implant, for the for the implantable uh, photonic devices. So this is the uh, structure of the silk. So so typically you have the two proteins. So in the center of the structure you have the fibrin, and the outside the coating is uh, uh, serine. And uh, for the structure of uh, uh, fibrin, is generally it's a, a sequence of the uh, animal acid. So this is a very uh, mm. 
So how do we make the silk device? Yeah? So first we get the silk cocoon, and then we put them into the water, and then, uh, we, uh, and then uh, we put them into the sodium uh, carbonate to remove the outlay of this uh, serosine protein. Yeah? So this is the starting materials. I just bring some of them here for those who have never been the, see the silicon cocoon before. And after the process, so this is what we, the device look like. Yeah. I just want, want to remind you that so one silk cocoon can make around uh, one kilometer of the silk fiber. So before I go to the next slides, I just, want, I just ask one question to the audience. Do you know what's the distance between the Helsinki to here, roughly? 10 yes, so around 10 kilometers. So that means the 10 cocoons, uh, 10 silk cocoons inside the bag can connect the Helsinki to here, around 10 kilometers, yeah. So this is uh, the left figure is about the silk, uh, the silk without processing. You can see around the surface, you, you have a lot of the contaminations and also a lot of, uh, 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 lot of this uh, serosin uh, protein. And after the process, you can see the silk fiber is pretty, in a pretty good shape, yeah. And the Raman, uh, Raman microscopy yeah, is a very useful tool to determine the chemical components inside of the silk. Yeah? So we did the Raman measurement to look at the, uh, the, the chemical components of the silk. We observed the three main uh, Raman peaks which correspond to the protein uh, vibration modes inside of the silk. Then also we look at the uh, light propagation property of the, uh, pro property of the silk fiber and if we put the light on the left, you can see the light can propagate inside of the fiber. So this is something very interesting, yeah? And also we did the color back measurement to, to look at the uh, pr light propagation loss of the silk fiber, yeah? So what we did is we put the light on the left, we use a power meter to measure the, uh, the output power on the, uh, on the right, and then we cut the fiber into a shorter length and we measure the power again. We compare these two values, we could be able to estimate the propagation loss of the silk fiber. So this is the results we get at 730 nanometer. So the loss of the silk fiber is around 3 dB per millimeter. So this is around two times larger than the spider fiber I've shown you before. And also we did the measurement of the different wavelengths from the, uh, from the green, red, or even to even close to the near infrared. Yeah. So this is the results. So we also get a pretty similar results. The loss of the uh, silk fiber is around uh, 3 dB per, uh, per, per millimeter. But when you look at the, uh, the results here, you can see that at a longer wavelength, the propagation loss of the silk fiber is much less. So that means so the, uh, this uh, silk fiber can have much better performance for the longer wavelengths, for example, at the near infrared. We also did the image-based uh, method to estimate the loss. So we also get pretty similar results, around uh, uh, 1 or 2 dB per millimeter. So when you look at the image, you can clearly see that. So the, so the major loss of the light is mainly because of the scattering of the light. So this is because of the imperfect shape of the silk during the process. So that means if you want to make the very, uh, uh, if you want to make a high performance of photonic device, you need this uh, reverse engineering process. So what the other people uh, did is uh, when they get the silk cocoon, they dissolve into the solution, then they make this liquid silk. Yeah. And then you can drop cast them uh, to make a very thin film, and after that you can use the lithography uh, method to patent them, and also you can print them if, uh, if you have a printer. And uh, if you want to turn the passive device into the active device, you can combine this silk fiber with, uh, the, uh, with the different uh, hyb uh, hybrid integration techniques. Yeah? For example, you can put the light on the silk substrate. We also look at the loninear response of the silk fiber. So loninear optics is to study the light inside of the loninear, loninear materials. Yeah? So it's a really enabling technology. For example, it has been used to almost to affect our everyday life. For example, it can be used for the light display, and also for the uh, telecom, and also for the image and the sensing, and also for the quantum technology as well. So this is the setup we used uh, uh, from Arizona to do the measurement, to cut the story short. So we have the 1550 uh, nanometer light source on the, on the top, and then we try to measure the signal 
at the wavelengths different from the input signal. So this is a little bit uh, different from normal linear optical measurement because for the linear, uh, for the linear optical measurement, you shine in light on the sample, yeah? You try to measure the signal at the exact, uh, at the exact signal, at the exact uh, wavelengths, yeah? But here we're measuring the signal at the different wavelengths. So this is the results we get. So the input wavelength is uh, 1550. We get the light around, uh, we get a signal around 800 nanometer and also 500 nanometer, which are corresponding to the second harmonic generation and also the third harmonic generation. So we also can do the image of the silica fiber. So the red color represents the second harmonic signal. The green color represents the third harmonic signal. So you can see, we can see the, you can see that, so the third harmonic signal is, is generated almost everywhere around the silk fiber. However, the second harmonic signal only generated in, in the middle of the uh, silk fiber. So the reason for that is because of the symmetric breaking of the protein structure uh, when you, uh, during the fiber tweeting. And I just want to highlight that, so this is the second harmonic uh, nonlinear effect and also third harmonic effect are the most uh, uh, why did you use the master to generate the quantum light sources? Yeah. So in principle, those uh, biomaterials also can be promising to generate the quantum light sources. Yeah. So this deserves future uh, uh, investigation. So here comes uh, to the, my, the conclude of my talk. So the silk is really interesting materials for photonics, in, in, uh, including the nonlinear optics, and also that provide a new approach, I mean, for the implantable photonics, which is, uh, at the moment, is, uh, is not uh, available at the moment. So when we are not doing the circle fiber work, we're also working on other materials, something like uh, carbon nanotubes, and also graphene, and also two-dimensional layer materials. And also we use them to generate the light, and also to make the light modulator, and also we try to use them for the different applications, such as the imaging and also sensing. So I would like to thank uh, the people who did the work. Uh, Anna, who, uh, she made the device and also did the cutback measurement. And Sami did the image-based processing measurements. And Nasa did the nonlinear measurements with the Kio from Arizona. And also, I need to thank all my previous and current research uh, group members. Some of, them, some of them are here. Thank you very much for your uh, great work. Wait, yeah, OK. Also, I think now is a very uh, good moment to thank all my collaborators, yeah. So in the last uh, four years since I joined Toronto, I get, I mean, valuable help from all my uh, co-authors and also collaborators. Uh, thank you uh, very much, yeah. Some of you are here, so without your support, I think I wouldn't be able to stand in here. So thank you very much. And also thanks for the funding agency. And also I would like to conclude my talk with this very nice image picture of these two-dimensional linear materials. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>